My name is Sean Gagan. What I do is look after a team of medical physicists and radiation engineers that uh, look after the radiation equipment that treat cancer. I've got a team of about 20 people who look after six lunar accelerators. Uh, we provide the service here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital and at Lyle McEwen Hospital. So we provide the services to support the public provision of radiation oncology. <laughs> When I was young, my motivation to uh, go into science was uh, really driven by my interest in what was alive and trying to figure out what made life work. And so I remember I asked my mum pretty early on, uh, are people made out of atoms too? And when she said yes, I didn't believe her. And so I had to try and find out. Part of that was then looking into science and then moved into physics. So I did a physics degree at university um, moved on from there into materials engineering, materials science and after coming back to Australia from working in Germany for a little bit I um, uh, started work at a hospital and there I found that uh, the training, the knowledge that I developed, the ability to think critically, solve problems, I could apply it in a very helpful way to help patients uh, receive treatment for cancer and that is extremely rewarding and so I uh, undertook a clinical placement in training how to become a medical physicist. That took some years after finishing my PhD and um, uh, I started working in the, at Royal Perth Hospital, then at the Canberra Hospital and now here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital I've been working as a medical physicist for about 21 years. The really strong motivation to move into uh, medical physics came from some biophysics lectures I attended at university and there was a lecturer who um, presented to us, the, the class, some very simple models that can be used to describe what's happening inside the human body. It went from uh, looking at the atomic interactions to the creation of molecules to DNA all the way up to uh, cells and organs and the entire uh, body. And over a course of um, uh, this, uh, this module, uh, I was able to actually get an insight into what made up a human being, what made up a life, and also how the use of radiation, ultrasound, ionizing radiation, radio waves, how the use of simple measurement techniques can determine what's happening inside somebody's body a bit like a science fiction, like you can cut somebody open without using a knife with a x-ray machine or an MRI machine, see what's happening inside them and be able to um, make a diagnosis and then also perhaps provide an intervention to treat the underlying disease. So that's really what was exciting me is actually understanding the link between atoms and molecules, uh, radiations, uh, simple measurement techniques that can be applied to an individual. And um, that's what drove me into medical physics to say this is something I really want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I was interested in science and figuring out how the world worked. So um, physics, mathematics, uh, chemistry were part of uh, the, uh, the subjects I really studied. I also did uh, French, English, uh, tried to understand how to communicate. Um, I was a pretty shy kid. Um, and uh, trying to learn how to use words most effectively was important to me. But I still didn't learn all those real skills until I got to university and started developing some life skills. It was the third year at university when all the pieces started to fit together so I, could, so I could see the whole picture and say, okay, now I think I know what I want to do. And even then, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. It was about five years later before I came back into uh, to Perth and joined the hospital as a physicist. And then I found out uh, what a medical physicist really does. It's quite an arduous process. In terms of the characteristics of a person who can be a medical physicist, it really needs somebody who has a great deal of cu curiosity about the world and trying to understand how to model the world mathematically so that you can use those models to describe what's happening inside an individual, a patient, um, and then use those to make predictions. You also need to be a good communicator. You need to be able to communicate your ideas, your findings, your understanding of the world to doctors, to nurses, to the patients, to 
the carers of the patients, their family and friends, to the public at large if there's uh, something to do with radiation and understanding the real impact of radiation on individuals. So the training pathway that I took uh, was about 20 years ago and so that pathway uh, was a bit more of an apprenticeship type arrangement whereas today it's much more formalised because the uh, the necessary knowledge is uh, needs to be demonstrated and, and, and um, developed in a much more structured way. So it's the safety of patients is uh, maintained and assured. The efficiency of delivering the technology is enhanced. So you've got as a most efficient utilisation of the expensive equipment we have in the hospital and that the quality of the service delivered to the patients is as high as can be practically achieved. So it's a university degree um, in physics, um, typically finishing in honours. Then you do a master's in medical physics. And once you've completed your master's in medical physics, you then have a minimum of about three years clinical placement in a training program at a hospital. And it takes sometimes longer than three years because life interrupts. So at the end of that period, whether it's four, four and a half years or so, uh, you then sit a certification exam and then you become credentialed. And even at that point, then you become qualified. It's still another five years at least on top of that to develop your uh, specialty. So from leaving year 12, it's about nine years at the quickest way through. In reality, it's probably going to be 10 or 11 years to get through. <coughs> I fail plenty of times, make mistakes all the time and learn from the mistakes. I've um, failed a subject at university and learned that you can't coast along on your natural ability. You have to work hard. I've failed at uh, relationships with people. I've failed at um, management. I've I've stuffed up with uh, thinking that I knew the answer and saying th this is the answer and going down that direction and finding out that it was a blind alley, that I shouldn't have gone down that path and that either an experiment I was doing, an investment of my effort in terms of um, what theory I was putting together. One example is when I was doing my PhD. I um, was looking at magnetic materials and trying to measure a, the time dependence of those, those magnetic materials. And I thought I had actually discovered something pretty new. And so I presented my results to my supervisor and he said, oh, this is looking pretty good and um, I, I worked on it. And what it was is that the, um, the magnetization of a magnet went backwards in time and it shouldn't have done that. And so I was thought I'd found something that uh, contravened um, uh, uh, thermodynamics. And I was trying to find out what was going on. I found out later that it was related to an interaction between atoms that re resulted in one type of atom pulling another atom up in the wrong direction. And I was just measuring the effect on that other atom. But then when I did the research later, I went back and found a paper from the 1960s and in that paper from the 1960s in the acknowledgement was the name of my supervisor. He had forgotten all about this and I had rediscovered something that had been discovered about 50 years before. So it, it was um, a mistake that was enjoyable to make because I learned something. Don't expect to always or um, don't expect to find something um, that has, someone hasn't done before. Just look for what other people have done and learn from other people. And other people make mistakes as well, they forget what they've done. I strongly believe if you do what re you really enjoy, you will do well at it and someone will pay you to do it because you're so good at it. Because there's so much need out there for physicists, engineers, mathematicians, the whole range of the technical aspect of how we live our lives. There's so many things that you can do that you really enjoy and people need you to do that. No, don't be in a hurry. Uh, be prepared to do what you really enjoy. Um, my advice to anybody would be do what you enjoy 
the opportunities will present themselves to you. And you may not end up exactly where you envisage yourself being. I have, I've had to travel. So you're not gonna be in your own home city um, if you're going to uh, pursue a career in science or in, in, in uh, medical physics. You'll need to travel. So I've um, trained in Perth. I worked in Dresden and Germany for a couple of years. Then I came back to Perth, um, trained there, then went to Canberra Hospital, so in uh, Canberra for about 10 years, and now here in, Royal, in Adelaide at Royal Adelaide Hospital for just over a year now. And even then there's plenty of other travel that needs to happen, because you've got to go to conferences, you've got to go to meetings, you've got to go to training courses. There's a lot of work to be done and be prepared to um, take your time. <laughs>